Okay, it is saying that I am officially live. So hopefully you guys are gonna start seeing this stream soon. I know it takes me a little while until things pop in, but I actually think that we are live right now. So I'm just gonna do my little check. I see it, I see live. I think we're live. So I think we're good to go. Um, hopefully my audio is doing well. If anyone can let me know if the audio does not sound good, uh, I just wanna really quickly check that I am on my good microphone. So you guys should have good audio. Hopefully you guys see me in beautiful HD. Uh, if you're not watching in HD, make sure you do. Like go ahead, you might be able to change your settings because through this wonderful live streaming software I'm using, you guys do have the ability to actually um, you have the ability to watch this at like a nice high def with my great camera. So it looks like I've got some people here. Hello, Tanya. Okay, so you guys, we're here live for live Planner Piece Masterclass. I hope you guys are as excited as I am. I really want to do these live classes more often and I've scheduled one a month for the rest of the year. So I'm so excited to be able to spend some one-on-one -on -one FaceTime with you and of course, give you guys as much value and information as I can through this format, uh, because I think this is a really important time of year, right? Like we are doing our best to get organized before the new year starts. So I wanna make sure that I'm doing my best to prepare you guys in every way I can for 2020 and beyond. So first a few little housekeeping things that I always like to do with these videos is that I would love you to go ahead and grab a drink right now because I'm expecting that this video is going to be something like two to three hours long. I know it's so much, but um, these things do tend to run, li uh, run long and I tend to be, you know, I'm very chatty. So um, make sure you go ahead and do that. I'm also going to go ahead and see if I can. One thing I remember from the last time we did a class was that there is a popping noise every time people leave a comment. So I want to see if there's any way for me to close that because I know it can be distracting for the replay viewers. Hmm, let me just see, what's this button do? I have no clue. I have no clue what some of the software stuff does. Okay, so we might not be able to mute that. I don't, I'm gonna test something real quick and I want you guys to let me know in the comments. Um, I'm going to mute my, oh, no, I don't think I can mute my audio here because I think it'll mess it up. Okay, let's move on, no big deal. We'll deal with the popping noises. Um, so grab a drink. I also wanna make sure you guys grab a notebook and grab a pen um, because you're gonna be taking a lot of notes, okay? Because this is gonna be very value-packed, jam-packed with information. So I wanna make sure that you guys are bringing your all to the, you know, to this event right now. Get yourself a drink, make sure you've got a notebook and a pen to stay focused um, and take notes because that is the best way to learn. You know, one of the first ways to learn is to write things down so you remember it for later. Take notes, okay? Also, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up right now, um, especially for those who are live and everyone who's watching the replay, give this video a thumbs up. It does help the video to perform better in, analyt in analytics and things like that so that more planner peeps in our community will find this video and get value from it. And then all of our community grows. So please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Um, I think we're a few minutes in here. And so I think we should probably just start in the class because I've got a few dozen of you guys right now live, which is awesome. Um, if you haven't already, feel free to share this link as well um, with any groups or anything you're in, tweet it out, put it on social media. This is actually, actually this is what we'll do. Let's do this first, you guys. I'm going to, everyone grab your phones and I'm going to like pose on screen right now and you guys can take a screenshot of me and post it to your Instagram or your Instagram stories and tell everyone that you're doing this right now, okay? So you guys wanna do that? I think that'll be so much fun. Okay, so grab your phone and I'm gonna go ahead right now, pull up your camera app or your Instagram app. Everyone with me on this one? Let me see. You guys with me? And I'm gonna go ahead and I wanna take a picture too for my Instagram. I like always fail to do this in my own classes. I can't do it all folks, can't do it all. <laughs> um, so. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do like a pose. What should I do? I'm just gonna like smile and, oh, hold up my planner. Here, here's my planner. 
I'll hold up my planner. Okay, maybe this hand. Yeah, okay. And you guys can take a photo and post this on Instagram and share it and let everyone know that we're live on my channel. So I will do my behind the scenes pick here that you guys can see. So I swear I'll pick my head up in a second. Okay, uh, three, two, one, cheese. I feel like a mannequin. I just like stood there for a second. I hope everyone got there. Everyone got your screenshot um, to share. I'm going to save this for now. I'm not going to be able to post it in this moment. Or maybe I will. Yeah, let me post it right now. Why not? Why not? Uh-oh, what have I done? Okay, so we're all doing this together right now. Posting our pictures right now to Instagram. Swipe up and join me live. Okay. Story, boom. Okay, so now I think we are officially ready to go, wouldn't you say? Okay, so just to give you guys a rundown about the class, it is going to be one of those lecture classes where I put up slides, um, and I do have, a, like I said, I have a lot of information to share, and the slides really do help me to make sure that I stay on point and don't ramble, because look, we're already like seven minutes in, and all I've been doing is rambling. Um, so... This helps me to stay on point because there's a lot to say. I get really psyched about this. And today's class is really, really important to me because in a way, I feel like this is me being able to merge um, everything I've learned about the planner world and planner community in the last few years, plus the whole new focus and philosophy that I have on planning that I've been using and executing in my life that I want to share with you all. Mm. Take a sip of water. <clears throat> Got to clear my throat. I'm sorry if that's <clears throat> a little gross, but I'm going to have to do that a few times. I'm going to be doing a lot of talking. Um, so I'm really excited about today's content. Um, and it's going to be a le like a lecture style, but we're going to come back at the end to do a Q&A. But before we do that, I wanted to do a little bit. Oh, well, let me do my whole intro first. Hold on. Let me do my intro so we get that out of the way. Okay. So you guys ready? We'll start. The we'll officially start now eight minutes in. Okay. We're officially starting. Hello, my Charmed Ones, and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time with me, I'd like to say welcome. My name is Alexis, but I'm also known as Miss Trenchcoat all across the internet. I'm an online entrepreneur who designs and sells productivity tools, strategies, and skills to help you manifest success with less stress. So if that sounds interesting to you, I'll leave some links down below in the description box where you can check out more of my work online and feel free, and feel free to download some of my latest free productivity tools over at thecharmedshop.com. Okay, so today we are doing the Planner Piece Masterclass, um, which is going to be all about helping you find planner piece, that very elusive planner piece that we're all looking for. We're all looking for our perfect planner, our unicorn planner, our ride or die planner, and a system that we can use that we feel confident in and helps us to not only manage our lives, organize our time, organize our tasks, but also helps us to reach our goals because at the end of the day, that's the most important thing for me is that my planner isn't just there to like remind me about another like random task, mundane life task that I'm not thrilled about, right? Right. Yes, I use my planner for that, but that's not the only thing I use my planner for because if that was it, I would be like knocking my head against the wall so frustrated and let me know in the comments if you feel the same way. My planner is not just about doing my day-to-day -day stuff that I have to do. I use my planner as well. And the most important thing I use my planner for as well is to keep me inspired towards my goals so that I am creating the life that I want to live, hitting the objectives that I want to hit, and living the life, being the person that I want to be, that I was put on this planet to be. And that's what I want to instill upon you today is this philosophy of approaching your planner like this so you can finally find that planner piece, so you can finally find the system that works for you, and that you stick to it and it helps you to really truly improve your productivity and improve your life. So. That is what we're doing today. Now, I thought it would be really fun for us to start with an icebreaker for those who are in the comments, if you're with me live and you're in the chat, or if you are watching the replay, please 
do me a favor and get involved because I thought this would be funny to do fun to do an icebreaker. Okay, so I'm leaving the icebreaker on on the screen for you guys. Um, and the icebreaker is to leave me a comment sharing your name, location, and what your first planner was. Do you guys remember what your very first planner was? I'm gonna go ahead and start first and share a story of my first planner. I have shared this before, so forgive me to my OGs who may have heard this like time and time again, but I got into the planner community um, online, like officially in like 2012, 2013, but my first planner was from like Claire's or Fashion Bug. It was either from Claire's or I think it was Fashion Blog. It was from the first one I think was from Fashion Blog. Fashion Blog. Fashion Bug. Does anyone remember that store? Um, I actually had a job in college at a Fashion Bug once. Um, but it was an animal printed little fuzzy planner. And it was like a six ring kind of little file fax, like a little girl version. Uh, maybe like a pocket size, but it was like an animal print faux fur. And I had like a million of these little planners that I would go through. Like I probably got one like every year, but I distinctly remember buying this one um, with money that I had gotten. My aunt would occasionally like as like a side job, she would um, clean the house of one of our family friends who was like this older gentleman who was single, didn't have a wife. So she would go like once a week or whatever and clean his house and he would pay her. And she would take me with her because she was very often the caretaker like on nights and weekends for well, when my parents were working. Um, for me and my brother so she would sometimes take me with her and would I would clean and she would like you know give me like 10 bucks like you know to for helping you know what I mean and so I remember like the first time we did that together she took me to fashion bug afterwards and I bought this planner like this fuzzy animal print what would I guess it was tiger print because it was orange with black I remember orange with black fur so that was my first planner and I probably wrote things in it like TV shows and like homework, right? But I felt like a darn girl boss. Like I felt like a boss babe in that moment. And that was probably the first moment that I fell in love with planners. So I would absolutely love to hear your stories. I know that was a little bit long, but I think you guys like hearing these fun little stories. And I think we each have a fun little story for how we got into planning. Um, and that's just the one that sticks out in my mind. And like I said, I had lots of little planners after that from like Claire's, um, I think there was a store called Icing that might still, I think Icing's still around. I think it's like a Claire's affiliate. I don't really know how this works, but they all had like those little girl planners, right? So that was my first planner system. So um, I'm seeing in the comments here, you guys are talking about Fashion Bluff Bug. Yeah, I love Fashion Bug. I thought it was so, it was my fave when I was little. Um, let's see. Detroit, oh, Donald in Detroit had a Franklin planner in 1985. I wasn't even born yet, Donald. Jeez Louise, isn't that cool? We got some real OGs here. And I, I do see that in the community, a lot of people who have been planner people um, in my community who have been a planner person for a long time, like since the 80s, started with a Franklin planner or a Franklin Covey. I remember in high school, the mall that um, was like kind of, you know, where we lived had a like Franklin Compass, is it called like Compass or it was Franklin Planner? It had a Franklin store, like a Franklin planning store. And I would go in there like salivating over like leather binders. And my friends would be like, yeah, we're going to go like to go shopping for clothes and like makeup. Like what are, we're going to go to Sephora. Like you are going to like salivate over planners, how random. But I did, I like absolutely was like obsessed with them, but you know, they were like a hundred bucks, right? So that was like way out of my like high schooler budget. Um, so yeah, so you've got some, uh, Yvonne from Silver Spring, Maryland has a day timer more than 30 years ago. Uh, Rianne says that she's from the Netherlands. Hello, welcome. Um, her first planner was a simple one in school in 1974. See, like, I know we got some like real planner OGs here, which I'm really excited about. So, okay, let's move on from this just so we can not make this like a 10 hour live stream, which it easily could be knowing me. But I would absolutely love to hear more about your first planner, who you are, where you're from, leave me a comment, leave me a message in chat because I think this is really fun to kind of hear people's planner stories and I absolutely love that. Don't forget you guys to give this video a thumbs up. There's a whole bunch of you here. There's more people here than thumbs up that I see. And one person, unfortunately, who just doesn't get it and it's okay, it's okay if planners aren't for you. I still love you and I'm sending you all my love, okay? Even though you did not give this video a thumbs up, it's okay. You you don't have to love planners the way we do, okay? We found our people, and if you are one of my people, you can sit with me, boo, okay? You can sit with me. I just like kissed my hands and got lipstick all over my hands. Thank God I had a little napkin here. <laughs> 
Okay, so that's the icebreaker. Thank you guys for humoring me. I think this is a fun way to get to know each other in the comments as well. So thank you guys so much for humoring me on that, okay? Um, let's go ahead and I'm gonna jump into the uh, full screen of my computer and we are gonna start doing our, our chat. I'm gonna close the chat out actually right here just so um, I can focus on the screen share. Oh, what are we doing here? And, oh good, I gave me the preview screen, excellent. And I'm gonna go ahead and pop into the full screen here. Excellent, I'm pretty sure we are full screen. Oh, and you guys can see me at the bottom, can't you? Hmm, let me see if I can, that's, um, uh oh. Can I move this? Mm, okay. It's like I can kind of see, okay, hopefully this doesn't cause problems for me. <laughs> Uh, you know what? Let me, can I escape out of the, oh, I can. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So hopefully you guys are still seeing me and everything. Uh, I see my little preview. Okay. So you guys actually have a preview of me on the screen as well. So we can still chat and you can still see me while I'm doing this. Okay. I better not like fidget too much if you guys are watching me on here. <laughs> okay. So Let's get started with our plan art piece masterclass because that is the topic of today's video. Make sure you've got a drink, a notebook, a pen. We are jumping in. Now, welcome everyone to class today. First, I want to talk to you guys uh, briefly again. I know I kind of mentioned this earlier. I'm going to repeat myself a little bit. I tend to do that, but please forgive me. Um, let's talk about why I created this class. Now, I want to be honest, this is not the first time I've done this class. I did this class. I created this for the first time, I think like two years ago. Um, but so much has changed in this time that I've been really wanting to update this class so badly. Like I said, this class is like all of the information that I have kind of put together over, you know, the past few years of being in the planner community, working with students, working with my community, talking to people about what their struggles are with finding planner peace. And it's going to integrate now my new philosophy on planning. So I keep seeing more and more women enter the planner community with high hopes for their planners and goals and spending lots of time and money and energy for very little result. Many of us look to planners and planning for the clarity, organization, personal development, and success that it can bring our lives, but very few of us seem to be meeting those expectations with our planners. As someone who has been a leader in this community for at least the past five years now, I'd like to help correct this for those of you who are ready to embrace my ideas. And I just wanna go out and say, I know that this information is not gonna be for everyone. I fully know that. But I know that there is a segment of the planning population who desperately wants to reach planner peace in order to feel like they're going to be able to move forward with their goals. They desperately want to have a planner system that works for them so that they can improve their lives because they know the possibility is there, but they're just struggling. And I know there's a lot of noise out there in the planner community. And I really want to cut through that noise, like karate chop through it and set the record straight for those of you who want this information, right? Not for everybody, but I know it's for some of you and hopefully all of you who are watching with me today. So let's set some expectation for today's class, okay? Because I love setting expectations. <laughs> what you'll get from the class if you're open to it. Again, if this isn't your cup of tea, if these aren't the ideas that you're ready for and you're not gonna resonate with them, no big deal. You don't have to watch this class. Um, you guys will know if this information is for you. You'll feel it and you'll get a sense of clarity, right, around why you're not seeing improvement with your productivity. That's one of the things that I want to help you with is to help you get clarity with, you know, why you're not seeing improvement with your productivity, why you don't feel like your goals are advancing, like you're using a planner, but things aren't getting better, right? I want to give you clarity around that. I want to help you identify what is holding you back from finding planner peace in your own life because there is significant reasons and we're going to go through those. I want to give you a strategy for how to overcome those obstacles, no matter how many of those obstacles are in your way. I'm so sorry, I just whacked my mic. Um, hopefully that didn't mess up the audio. Um, no matter how many of the obstacles are in your way, you can overcome them and I've got some strategies for you. And I want to give you some tools for establishing planner peace and improving your productivity as well. I also have, of course, some free gifts for you today. So in the description of this video, you'll see a link for your free gifts. I created an exclusive set of planner dashboards and coordinating iPhone 
uh, backgrounds. So it says, good things come to those who plan. And it's in a beautiful black and white marble, which you guys know I love. And they can actually be printed for like A5 half letter, full letter planners, um, and personal size. And you can, you know, if you know, if you use like a happy planner and you know like what the dimensions are, you can, you know, print it to whatever dimensions you want to print it. But I have those free gifts. It is a free download. Get the link, go grab those free gifts. These are me to you, some beautiful things I just wanted to give you to inspire you on this journey, okay? Now I have a few questions for you to write down in your notebook and your pen to set your own expectations now. So first question is, what do you want your planner to do for you? Have you ever sat down and thought about that? Like what you actually want your planner to do for you? Like what your goals are for your planner? I know I've talked about this in the past and sometimes I think it's silly to say, what are your goals for your planner? But, you know, if you're someone who wants your planner to be the tool, be the personal assistant for your life that's going to help you stay organized and move your life forward and improve your life and hit those goals and be your dream, right? Embody your dream. I think you should set those expectations for your planner, right? Because it, you can always come back to that information. And let's say you're someone who doesn't want to do that. Like, let's say that you want a planner to hobby craft in, to use um, as an art form, like to journal or to scrapbook, right? Then that's what you want from your planner and you do you boo. But it's very important, I think, that we get clear on what we actually think the purpose of for our planner is. And I will say that for me, and I've said this already, my planner is meant to number one, be like a personal assistant for me, right? It's helped to help, to help me remember things that I do want to get done, even the mundane things that are very important. And we all know sometimes the devil is in the details in life. And so it is, you know, meant to be the place that holds that important information. But more importantly than that, this is where I put all of my dreams and goals and hopes for my life. Like this is the tool that I use to help me basically become the architect of my life. And it's the thing that has helped me, the tool that has helped me to hit so many goals, to, you know, start, you know, blogging and YouTube, to uh, do a business full time, to grow that business, to grow my community, to even do things like personal things. Like you guys know, a few years ago, I lost a whole bunch of weight, you know, using the tools that come in my planner to help me stay focused on what's important to me and help me stay organized so I can make room in my life for all the things I want and kind of get take all those things that you have to do and kind of minimize them, you know, streamline them, get the job done as quickly and easily as possible so I can live more of my life doing the things that I want to do, okay? So I want you to think about what you want your planner to do for you. That's question number one. And question number two is, what do you see as three obstacles to achieving that end? So like right now, why aren't you achieving that if you are someone who's using a planner, right? Do you see obstacles that you've been facing? Have there been things? Is it, you know, you haven't found a planner that works for you? Um, you have a hard time sticking to the planner. Um, maybe you change planners a lot and therefore you're not sticking to the same exact planner. And so things are all over the place. Maybe you've got lots of different planners and you can't choose which one. So you use all of them and then you've got plans everywhere and it, you feel disorganized. What are the obstacles that you see to achieving that end for what you want your planner to do for you, okay? Three things, you know, if you have more, feel free to write them all down, but I think we can probably think of three reasons that we're not achieving what we want with our planners, okay? Now, I do wanna remind you to stick with me until the end of today's class. Make sure you take notes, and I want you to write down your questions as we go, because we're gonna do an open Q&A at the end of the class. If I go to, you know, you know, it's gonna take me forever to go through this class if I stop to read the comments. So please, um, hold your questions. You probably are going to get answers to them, so make sure you write them down so that you can identify when you've actually learned them. Like, oh, she said what the answer to this is, and I'm gonna write it down here so I know. Um, and then whatever doesn't get answered at the end, I am going to stay as long as it takes to get everybody's questions answered. Okay, so let's get started with the meat of today's class. Women and productivity, okay? And if there are any gentlemen with me today, excuse me, good sir, I um, do speak mostly to women, but if you're here because you resonate with me, you are more than welcome, okay? But when it comes to women and productivity, I believe that women have a major productivity problem. Women today enjoy more power and freedom than we ever have in history, but at the same time, we have never had so many expectations from ourselves and others. Women are still expected to be the primary caregivers of domestic life, raising children, caring for a spouse, an aging family, tending to the home, and volunteering in the community. 
And at the same time, many of us still work at least one full-time job, and more women are head of household or the breadwinners of their families in comparison to men. And yet, we take on all of this, literally. We are running the world, you guys, and we still feel like we're failing. We feel like we aren't doing enough. We feel extreme amounts of stress, overwhelm, and guilt that leads us to continue to sacrifice more and more of our personal energy on everything else while essentially ignoring our own well-being to the detriment of our mental and physical health. And I really do think this is a big problem. Like, I really do feel like I see more and more and more women taking on more and more and more expectations from outside themselves feeling less fulfilled, and yet they're busier than ever, working harder than ever, more successful than ever. They're doing nothing for themselves. They are lacking in their self-care, lacking in their health, and it's being, it's doing ravenous things to their physical and mental and physiological well-being. And at the same time, they think they're failing. Isn't that crazy? I think it's crazy. And I think the problem is that the P, that there's this specific PR message on female productivity. And I believe the advice and messaging women are receiving Um, to manage the situation is also skewed. So there's no shortage of advice out there for women on how to be more productive and make time for everything in their life. We hear things like eat, sleep, hustle, repeat. The secret to my success is my 4 a.m. morning routine. Shoot me in the head. You guys know how much I hate the idea of having to wake up super early so we're super exhausted in order to be successful. This is something we hear a lot. And you guys, if you've been following me for a while, my OGs know I do not believe you need to wake up earlier to be more successful. Uh, Another one I love to hear is you can sleep when you're dead. And the bags under my eyes are Chanel, right? Let's glorify the fact that we're not getting enough sleep right? Let's do that. Because, you know, sleep's not important or anything. It's not like the entire reason we stay alive is because we sleep enough. Um, And time management tips to complete a week of work in just four hours, right? Like, let's do this impossible life. Let's wake up super early and only get like three hours of sleep. Let's glorify the fact that we're working so hard and we're so exhausted that we have to like glamorize the bags under our eyes. Let's cover our eyes with like so much makeup, right? Like, so we've got like this fresh look, right? The makeup will cover them, right? We can we can cover the fact that we're not sleeping, right? But eventually this is going to take a toll, right? Take a toll on our health and our lives and just lead to a disastrous end. And I believe that everything we've been taught about productivity is wrong. Yes, and even I have perpetuated these stereotypes in the past, but no more. The truth is that women are the most productive people on the planet. But we need to stop giving away our energy to external expectations that don't serve us. We need to stop with the glorification of busy and the hardcore hustle mindset is doing nothing for us. We need to get clear on our priorities and set boundaries around them. And we need to focus on the results that we want to achieve rather than the things that we should be doing based on external expectations. Stop shooting yourself to death because that's literally what we're doing. We are doing all the things we think we should do and running around like crazy, glorifying busy, right? Busy does not equal productive, by the way. Um, We're glorifying being busy. We are sleeping less, doing more, stretching ourselves thin, and we're going to an early grave for it, ladies. Like that's what we're doing. It is taking a toll on our mental and physical health. It is causing us health issues. Um, I think there's no one in this the community that doesn't have a friend, know someone in this community who, you know, is struggling with something health related in their life. And a lot of this has to do with the way that we're not taking care of ourselves because we're taking care of everyone else. The truth about being productive is that it doesn't have to be hard. I am living proof of this. You don't need to wake up early to be productive. You don't need to be busy 24-7. You don't need to do everything. Productivity is a strategy. It's taking the steps you feel guided to take to fulfill your desired results. And I don't want you guys to forget that. Like, write this down. Productivity is just a strategy, okay? Do the things you feel guided to do to fulfill the results that you are looking for, right? The results you are looking for, right? Not the results everyone else thinks you should have, right? Not the things you should be doing. Focus on the things that you know feel good to you, make sense to you, are the actions you want to take to get your dream life, And let me tell you, when that happens and women have that power and take that power back and use their energy in the right way, amazing things happen for this world because, again, we are the caretakers. This this really is something that affects not just ourselves, but everyone around us. The good news is, is that when we embrace this, there's no way to go but up from here, right? There is a positive way forward. There is a way that can help us heal the mistakes of our past, get control of our present, and set a course for a new future. 
a future that includes teaching and setting a better example for our children and the next generations. Because like I said, this doesn't just affect you. There is a true trickle down impact with this sort of self-care. And I think that it's very dangerous that we are sort of setting this expectation that, you know, women have to hustle, 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 take on expectation, ex expectation, because it's a dangerous precedent be to be setting for our daughters, granddaughters, nieces, everyone in our life, other women in our life. And we're also training men to expect this from us as well. And it's just so detrimental. And I think it's interesting. I was thinking about this the other day that every generation toes the line that they're working hard to give their children a better and easier life. I know that I grew up with this mentality. I had immigrant grandparents that came from Italy in the 1960s. My father's um, parents, they came from Italy and Sicily. They He has an older brother that was born in Italy. My father was born here. Like as soon as they got off the boat, my daddy was the anchor baby. <laughs> an anchor baby from Italy. And they worked so hard in factories as a seamstress, as a machinist, my grandfather, for years and years and years and years and years, saved all of their money, lived on scraps. And this was in order to help my father establish a career and a foothold for his life and for me and my brother to establish ourselves because they were able to give us so much. They funded my education for college, which was such a beautiful and amazing thing. But I am ever present and ever aware that I, my success was built on the backs of them. And I know that this is, like I said, it's a line that we all toe, that we are working hard to give the next generation a better chance. But why are we setting this example then? Because all we're doing is digging a deeper and deeper hole, right? Because the truth is, is that my generation, I'm a millennial, is truly the first generation where things haven't come easier, right? I would say that for me, I was very extremely lucky that I think my life is easier. Me, Alexis, sitting right here at Miss Trenchcoat, I think I'm one of the few exceptions within my generation. But I think my generation as a whole, the kids that I went to college with and high school with, right, they don't have it easier. They had a tougher time finding jobs, even though they all went to college. You know, they had to take whatever was given to them. Um, they have, you know, they're not buying homes, right? They say that millennials don't buy homes anymore. Like all of these things are changing. We're the first generation that doesn't have it easier. We have less than our parents did at the same age, and we seem to be working a lot more. So today I want to share with you the roadmap of the way forward and the tools and strategies I've used to extricate myself from this hamster wheel of the traditional model of productivity. Yes, we're going to be talking about planners and planner piece today and finding that planner piece, but within this discussion of planner as life organization tool, and that's really what I want to highlight here, in the discussion of finding planner piece so that you find a planner that becomes your life organization tool, I'm also going to be unpacking this new philosophy of productivity that I've been working on, okay? Now, there's one very important thing that I, I want you guys to know before we even get into so much of the meat of this. If there's one thing that you take away from this class today, one lesson, one tip, it's this. Finding planner piece, making a change in your productivity, and seeing results can only happen when we get honest with ourselves about our capabilities and limitations, okay? I know that for many of you, this means being honest with yourself that you are already very productive and extremely capable. You're just not seeing it because you're comparing yourself to others. Your worth does not come from your planner. It doesn't come from your schedule. It doesn't come from your career. How many people you help and take care of or how many check marks that appear on your to-do list, right? That's not where your worth comes from as a human being on this planet. It just does not. I know we as women struggle with this, but you already are enough. You already do enough and you are so worth investing your time and energy into, are we clear on that? Because this is the most important thing that you need to know and really feel in your heart and in your mind in order to be successful with this class, moving forward from today, you know, finding planner peace, achieving everything, every objective and goal that you have for your life. We really need to be clear on this because this is the really the most important thing. Time and time and time and time again, I talk to students, I talk to women in my community, and when I help them analyze their productivity situation, they come to me thinking they're not productive, they feel like they're a failure. Jeez Louise, I talk to women who are so productive, are so capable, are handling so many things, but are just stressed out. They're stressed out because there's too much on their plate. So this is the thing that you have to be honest with yourself about, is that most of you, I know this, watching watching today, I I'm looking at you. Y yeah, don't try to hide behind your coffee cup. I see you. I see you. 
You are already enough. You are already productive and you are so capable. You already are so capable. I just need you to believe that. I need you to believe me, okay? If you've ever learned anything from me, ever believed me, ever felt like I had something to say that resonated with you, you need to believe that, okay? Because if we can't get clear on this, the rest of what I'm about to say to you in this class, it's only gonna go so far. It's never gonna solve your entire issue until you get clear on the fact that you are already a productive and capable person. You're already worthy, right? And your your planner is just gonna help be the icing on top of the cake for you, okay? I hope you guys feel that. And I wanna hear in the comments if you do or not. Okay, so we're going to cover a lot today. Not all of it will apply to each of you in this moment, but I do ask you to keep an open mind. This class is about helping you get clear on your journey to planner peace and really what is holding you back from planning and executing on the tasks that have priority to you. Because I want you to have your dream life and I know that you can do it and I know it doesn't have to be as hard as you think it's going to be. I know this because you're already more productive and capable than you think, and nothing gets the job done like a woman who knows her worth, okay? So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna talk to you guys about my journey to planner peace so that hopefully you, this journey will resonate with you so that you guys can actually see that this is possible for you as well. I know right now some of you might not be thinking it's possible for you, but I'm telling you, it is. So my journey to, to planner peace, okay? Believe it or not, I've been where you are right now, and if I can make it through, so can you. Some of you may remember pieces of my journey that are shown on YouTube and Instagram, but if you're new to me, let me take a moment and introduce myself, okay? Who am I? Who is this crazy loudmouth Italian Arabic girl from New Jersey who's talking to you right now and sometimes breaks into a New York accent, strangely, because my cousins and stuff are from New Jersey, are from New York, sorry. Um, so hello, I'm Alexis. I'm also known as Miss Trench Coat all across the internet. I design and sell tools to help you manifest success with less stress. How productive am I as this productivity guru? Let's talk about some things that I don't really love to talk about myself and like things that I have accomplished, but I know that it's helpful to give people some context about how very productive I can actually be. So um, I graduated college with two completed majors in three years, okay? So JMU, class of 07, go Dukes, woohoo! Um, I'm a little bit of an overachiever, okay? I finished college, graduated early with two complete major programs under my belt. I worked my way up the corporate ladder at a Fortune 50, holding four jobs in five years, and in that time, more than doubling my salary, Okay. Kind of productive, I guess. I've been blogging since 20, 2008. I've been on YouTube since 2009. And I turned that hobby into my business in 2014, leaving that corporate nine to five grind forever. And I replaced my salary in six months. Okay, so I'm someone who has who knows a thing or two about hitting goals, about cutting the corners, the right corners to make sure I get ahead, to making sure that I get the job done as efficiently as possible, right? might know a thing or two. I absolutely love productivity. And the reason is, is that I consider myself the world's laziest person, okay? Productivity and planning helps you to achieve more by doing less. And I know people love to like laugh at me when I say I'm the world's laziest person because I know many of you look at me and are like, what are you talking about? You're so productive. But really on the inside, I'm productive. I'm, I'm lazy <laughs> and I'm only productive because I've been studying productivity and studying the strategy that helps me achieve the things and basically executing on all the things we're going to be talking about today, setting boundaries, losing expectations for other people, um, and really just focusing on the objectives I wanna hit, right? But productivity can really, the study of productivity can really help you to achieve more with while doing less. I'm very interested in living a life and running a business that is as free of stress, drama, and overwhelm as possible. Amen to that in the comments if you are as well. And today I wanna to inspire more of you to live what I like to call my charmed life that is focused on manifesting your own version of success by setting the record straight on women and their productivity and planning issues. Unfortunately, much to my chagrin, productivity is not taught in schools. And I wish that productivity and time management were classes that you could take in school, but they aren't. But the skills of productivity and planning and time management are strong determining factors over whether you're going to be happy, healthy, and successful in your life. These were skills that I taught myself once I realized that I could be lazy and successful at the same time. <clears throat> and that's kind of the irony of 
the charmed life concept that I have, it's that people think you got lucky, right? Like people think I got lucky. I've had people tell me like, you just got lucky, but you make your own luck, okay? And thankfully, good productivity skills means that it looks harder. Like what I've created looks like it was harder to achieve, looks like it was more work than it actually was for me. Water break, take, take a sip, you guys. <clears throat> I'm only like a quarter away, you know, through my slides. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about my planner journey. Let's try to like zip through this section. Okay, so 2014, that's where I like to say it began for me, okay? I think my first planner video was probably in 2012 or 2013, but we're gonna say 2014 was really where it all began. So 2014 reignited my planner love. And this is where I started making regular videos on YouTube about planners and how I use my planner to get things accomplished. I also left my job this year, that year, to follow my dream of running my own business. So there was a lot on my plate. I dabbled with different binders. I had Kiki K's, I had Kate Spades, I had Filofaxes, and I used multiple planners at once. I used a collection of inserts, most of which I designed, in order to develop a planning system that covered all the bases for my needs. There was lots of pretty planning in my life in 2014 with stickers and washi, but no peace because I kept changing my system very often. In 2015, I started to identify my planning issues finally, okay? So I started using a more complete system that was designed by me. I was using my own inserts 100% of the time. Project planning became a big focus in my planner in order to help me manage all the objectives that I wanted to reach. And I was doing pretty planning with a purpose. I used stickers and the washi tape, but only to accent my plans and inspire me. Mid-2015, the Charmed Life Planner launches. Now, this is my first functional planner with what I called my continuous style of inserts that includes calendars, trackers, and weekly spreads to plan. I removed the excess sections from my planner. I bound my Charmed Life Planner and the project planning inserts into a DIY disc bound format. You can see a little picture of that. Maybe you guys can see videos from 2015, plenty of videos on it from 2015 in my channel. And this became my ride or die. In 2016, I decided to experiment with bindings a little bit. I experimented by creating a spiral bound planner. So I still used my own Charmed Life Planner and the project planning inserts, but I bound them into a spiral style planner. The spiral was versatile, but it was not 100% right for me. Mostly the bulk was an issue in the planner. I still have issues with bulky planners. It, it annoys me. It's like one of my pet peeves. <laughs> So in mid-2016, I went back to Discbound again, still using the same inserts that were set up in the previous Spiral Bound Planner. I just changed the binding. And I still use some decor with my functional planning stickers that I designed, and you can buy those and print them on demand from my shop. Planner piece seriously started settling in for me at about this time. Then in 2017, I still was in the Discbound Charmed Life Planner. I was no longer spending a small fortune on planner supplies or at the Target dollar spot. Give me an amen if you feel me on that one, because we all know we could drop a pretty penny on the dollar spot. Isn't it so funny? There, the stickers and the washi were only a dollar. I don't know why I had a $300 Target bill. Honey, sorry about that. Uh, stop, and I also stopped comparing my planner to other people's. I think this is a big issue in the com community as well. When we're seeing what other people are doing, it can really lead us off track. And I really started developing this strong sense of planner piece. Like I knew that my planner was reliable. I knew that I was going to use it. I used it every day or most days, you know, on the weekends, maybe you get a little touch and go, but you know, it really was the planner system that was helping me achieve my goals. And then in 2018, I launched the Bound Master Planner. So this was the all-in-one bound planner that incorporated my Charmed Life Planner inserts with my project planning inserts, plus a new section called my Brilliant Ideas for pre-planning. This new three-part system was coined the Master Planner because it truly covered every need of a functional planner. Producing a bound style planner was highly requested in my community, but I knew that my system in a spiral bounding was just, it was just gonna end up being too bulky. Like I said, I hate bulk. So I chose the book binding and I was very pleased with the compact system. So 2019, I continued using that bound master planner system. I made a few tweaks to the layout to make certain spreads more functional for different users' needs, but nothing major changed. Um, I started the year in my 2019 bound edition, but in September, very recently, I started playing in my personal size with a six ring binder after I created my 2020 insert bundle and launched that. So I'm still using the master planner inserts. Um, I'm just using my personal size print on demand ones in a six ring binder. 
So again, same sense of planner piece that just always follows me through, right? The fast, the past few years using the functional planning system where my planner is more than just a calendar. It's truly a tool for planning in every way. So I went through many different binders, inserts, and accessories through the years. It cost me a lot of money, and I was always on the hunt for the next best thing. Never stuck to anything very long until I went back to the root of planning. The biggest thing I learned was that no single planner was ever going to be perfect. There's no perfect binding. There's no perfect paper. There's no perfect single insert. But if the system as a whole is solid and you stick with it, you can manage and achieve great things. Now, if you feel like you're in a similar situation, next I'm going to walk you through some of the most common reasons people have trouble finding planner piece and how to overcome them, okay? So we're going to walk through the five reasons you are not finding planner piece. Please take a sip before we get through this. Okay, five reasons you're not finding planner piece. Reason number one, you have shiny object syndrome. <laughs> Does this sound like you? If you spend more time setting up new planners than you do actually using them, if you have fallen into the trap of using multiple planners because you have so many that you need to justify owning them, and if you're in the cycle of buying a new planner, setting it up, and then finding issues with it that mean it's not for you, and repeating that cycle over and over, get a new planner, find issues with it, oh, this isn't for me, get a new one. Find a new planner, oh, this has issues with it, and try a new one, right? If that's the cycle that you're in, this might be you. So shiny object syndrome is when you keep purchasing different planners and accessories because you are attracted to what is new. This is a very common situation that I see in the planner community for why people don't feel at peace with their planner. We have a lot of options for what planners to use and how to decorate and accessorize our planner and chasing the latest and greatest becomes something of an addiction. I mean, there's a reason that hashtag planner addict, it's a real thing, you guys. It's not unusual for people to believe that new is better, right? A lot of people believe that new equals better. We're trained to think that that way within a capitalist system that's focused on planned obsolescence or a more disposable economy. And planners fit perfectly into that system because they are normally designed for one year of use. So chasing the latest and greatest ultimately means chasing your tail while flushing dialers down the toilet. So if you're consistently switching your planner, you're never going to establish the routine of functional planning. And at the end of the day, you will be no closer to reaching your goals and objectives. If you use too many planners at once, you'll end up disorganized with important information all over the place and no concrete plan of action. The disposable nature of most planners means that once you buy a planner, set it up and try it out, if it doesn't work for you, you can't just return it or resell it in some situations. So planners can easily become a very expensive interest. Now, how do we overcome shiny object syndrome? Now, I too have experienced shiny object syndrome, SOS, which is, it's so pertinent that SOS is the acronym for that because it's like, I'm having a planner <laughs> emergency here. Um, as someone with a YouTube channel and a genuine passion for planning, it's easy for me to get into this like planner, planner merry-go-round as well. But I reached a point where the waste of it all was really starting to get to me. So what helped me overcome this was realizing that planners were a thing now, right? So they're not going away. Brands are releasing new planners left and right, so I don't need to run out and purchase the newest one that catches my eye. Since planners are part of the disposable economy, better and better things are coming out every day. So when the year is up and your current planner is done, you'll have even more options to choose from at the right time. Heck, you might even find a deal on a planner that you thought you missed out on earlier, right? So but this is what I've been seeing a lot. I say no to a lot, a lot of different planners when I see them, right? I see them out, woo -hoo, like binders that I might be interested in. And I just say, just pass on it, just pass on it. Ultimately, I always see something, oh, good thing I didn't buy that because I like this one better. You know what I mean? Like I ultimately always see something I like better. So you have to ask yourself whether you're into planners for the hobby of it or if you're into planners for the productivity aspect because there is a distinct difference. If you want to use your planner as a tool to assist in the attainment of your goals, get off the merry-go-round and commit to one planner. Reason number two that you're not finding planner piece, you're relying on the opinions of others. Does this sound like you? If you're consistently watching planner setup videos to see how other people are using their planners even after you've set up your own planner. 
if you keep adding or adjusting your planner setup based on photos you see on Instagram or Pinterest, or if you're trying to replicate the planner setup of your favorite influencer instead of setting up your planner to fit your needs, you might have this struggle, relying on other people's opinions too much. So relying on other people's opinions means that you're trying to replicate someone else's productivity success by mimicking their planning style. This is a very common situation as well that I see in the community where we have a lot of people sharing their planners publicly and influencing the community at large. There are a lot of planner brands on the market, some like my own run by an influencer in the community and others that partner with influencers to create content intended to make your productivity glands salivate at the sight of a perfectly decorated planner page. It's not unusual for people to follow the lead of others, especially because humans are creatures of consensus. The thinking goes, if someone I like or trust uses this planner and has found success with it, then I will too. The real danger of relying on other people's opinions is that everyone's priorities and needs vary. This doesn't mean that one person's success can't be your success, but we need to be careful when choosing who to listen to and ensure that their priorities are in line with our own needs and that they too are even finding success with their system. There's nothing worse than replicating someone's system or methodology and then getting frustrated with yourself, right? Unfortunately, attention is the majority of influence. Who you pay attention to really matters, okay? And I tend to find that there's a lot of people in the community that are doing, like, you know, being planner influencers, um, and they're always showing you new systems and showing you things that are out there and changing their own system. And even if you look back to 2014, 2015-ish for me, I was even in this, in this, right? Where it was like I kept getting new planners sent to me by brands to check this out, check this out, and I kept changing my system, right? Like, you can't consistently rely on someone who is also changing their system as well, which is one of the reasons why I really pulled back on showing you planner setup videos because I'm not changing my planner very often anymore. And I don't want to send the wrong message to you guys that like you should be reevaluating your planner system every month, looking for new binders, looking for new things, because you're never going to establish peace that way. You're never going to establish functional planning. You're never going to consistently reach goals if you keep changing things. So how to overcome the influence of others. Now, I too have looked to the opinions of others to help me decide what planners to buy and how to set up my planner, getting excited by the groupthink mentality, but then regretted my decision or found that I was taking advice from someone who either A, had shiny object syndrome themselves, or B, just had different priorities for how to use their planner. Unfortunately, attention is the majority of influence. Who you pay attention to online matters, and it will affect the way you plan or the way you think that you, what's that word again, should be planning. Don't should yourself to death. So you choose influencers intentionally and stick to ones whose planning methods make you make the most sense for you in your life. <clears throat> again, this is one of the reasons why I don't love sharing inside my planners online, because I know people see the way I plan rather than the greater methodology that I'm using to plan with and try to replicate what I'm doing to no avail for their own lives. The way I need to plan my day may not be the way that you need to plan your day, and it's important that you never lose sight of that. If you're someone who is easily influenced or doesn't feel like they have enough knowledge on planning to choose for themselves. Reason number three <clears throat> that you might be finding, having a hard time finding planner piece is that you value form over function. So does this sound like you? If you are preoccupied with finding the perfect planner based on its superficial aspects, how it looks, the precise size, color, material, <clears throat> even being very selective about the binding. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me, guys. I got a little bit in my throat. <clears> throat> If the plan with me videos that you prefer watching are tutorials for decorating with washi and stickers or even drawing or hand leathering, lettering, not leathering, <laughs> rather than showing you how to organize information, or if you have a mini meltdown whenever you write something wrong in your planner and need to scratch or white out an entry, this could be you. So focusing on form over function means you are prioritizing the way your planner looks over how you are actually using it to keep organized. With all of the planning content online and so much of it focused on how we can cultivate the most stylish or aesthetically pleasing planner, rather than focusing on how to strategically use it, I see many people struggle with this, and even I have in the past. 
The term planning now refers to scrapbooking and hobby crafting within a planner, as opposed to the literal definition of to arrange a method or scheme before any work, enterprise, or proceeding. That's literally the definition in the dictionary. So this confusion around the terminology of planning versus scrapbooking or crafting can obviously influence people interested in the topic of traditional planning and often has the effect of redirecting people's attention away from their original objective. I think we've all experienced times online when we went looking for one thing and fell down a virtual rabbit hole of content we didn't expect that suddenly changed our perspective and desires. This is how influence works online. So it's no judgment on anyone who falls into this sort of rabbit hole. We just need to climb out for the sake of our productivity eventually, right? So focusing too much on the superficial aspects of planning will be a continual hindrance on your productivity. Life is often a messy affair and planning for it can become equally so. If you use your planner to track tasks and events after the fact and not using it to create a plan ahead of time, your productivity won't improve. Now, if you want to scrapbook or craft, that's absolutely okay. Just realize that if that is how you're using your planners, it's not planning in the true sense of the word, and you won't be getting much but personal enjoyment from the process. So how to overcome form over function. If you've been caught up in the form of your planner or in the scrapbooking and crafting segment of the planner community in the past, but you want to make a switch for the benefit of your productivity, first, just realize that you are making a choice for your own personal development. No, it doesn't mean that you have to give up one for the other. You might just need to get a second planner for actual planning. Next, start looking at your planner for what it is, a tool. Like any other tool, physical or digital, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It matters how you use it. A hammer doesn't have to be pretty to be effective. It serves a purpose, and that's the most important thing. So start challenging yourself to get outside your comfort zone by purposefully letting your planner be messy. Use messy handwriting. Use multiple colored inks. Scratch things out as necessary. The best way to overcome this perfectionist tendency with the way your planner looks is through aversion therapy, exposing yourself to the very thing you're afraid of until it no longer affects you, okay? So this is how I would recommend getting over this issue if you know you struggle with this. Reason number four that you might not be finding planner piece is that you actually have a productivity issue, right? Like I said, I don't think this is going to be most women. I really don't think it's going to be most of you, but it's possible that you do have a productivity issue that's keeping you from sticking to a planner and planning consistently. So maybe this sounds like you. If you set up a planner and then fail to write your tasks and events into it regularly or forget to check it for information on what you need to do, could be you. If you create a plan within your planner, but then don't finish all the tasks that you expected in a day. So basically over planning, right? You list a whole bunch of stuff out, but then you don't get all of it done. Or if you're using your planner regularly, but you don't see things improving in your life, right? You're just as overwhelmed as ever, and you're struggling to dig yourself out of a backlog of tasks. This could be a productivity issue. When it's not your planner that's the issue, but rather your own personal productivity skills, it doesn't matter how great your planner is, it'll never help, right? When it comes down to it, the best planner in the world can't fix poor self-discipline, bad routines, and negative habits. A tool, even a great one, is no substitute for the skills necessary to use it. I personally believe that a well-organized functional planner system in and of itself can help train the user to improve their productivity. However, if you don't use it or learn from your past mistakes, it is useless. So one of the problems with planners is that they can make you feel productive and organized even if you're not, okay? So research has shown that simply making a to-do list makes you feel more organized even if you never take action. It also gives you a 42% increased chance that you will follow through, but that still leaves a 58% chance that the feeling of being organized will be enough for you. I believe that this simple fact also explains why some people swear by the use of multiple planners because the reward center of your brain thinks more equals better, right? When in reality, more planners can confuse your productivity when not used under the strictest of circumstances by highly organized and disciplined individuals. At the end of the day, it's up to each of us to take responsibility for our productivity by choosing to actively use our planners, observe our habits, and make the necessary changes to improve our efficiency. So how to overcome a productivity issue. Self-observation is key. 
It's important to really dig deep and understand what you do and why you do it so you can identify the negative negative patterns that cause trouble for your productivity. I believe that most people who struggle with productivity have the best of intentions and work extremely hard, but still find themselves behind due to a few bad habits that throw them off track. Knowledge is power, but practice makes perfect. Learning more about productivity is, of course, an excellent way to empower yourself to make changes successfully, but nothing is more productive than acting on what you learn through trial and error. Self-development is an ongoing process where you will learn from your failures more so than research or success ever will. So get honest with yourself. Do you really have a productivity issue or do you just think you do? As I've already mentioned earlier, women especially take on a lot of expectations and often feel like they are doing a poor job when they are in fact managing an impossible situation. Be honest with yourself about how much you are taking on and accomplishing and if you just feel like you aren't doing enough. And finally, reason number five that you may not be finding planner peace is that you're using and you are not using a complete planning system. So if you've got an incomplete planner, this might sound like you. If you have a planner that you try very hard to use and make work, but it never seems to have enough space for what you need to record. If you have tried numerous different calendar inserts, but struggle to find the layout that works for your needs, or if you end up supplementing your planner by using a second planner or notebook to actually outline plans or projects before they get scheduled into your calendar, this could be you. So an incomplete planner system causes disorganization and stifles clarity. The purpose of planning is to cultivate and outline the vision for what you want to achieve before you take action. But if your planner doesn't have all the necessary parts for brainstorming your vision, fine tuning, solidifying the process and allocating or distributing tasks, all you have is an unprioritized mess. In my experience, this means most people aren't doing the work of planning. They're simply using their planner calendar spreads to record data that they're already aware of, which is good for remembering, but not good for optimizing what work you'll actually do and the process you will undertake so that your path to the finish line is streamlined and simplified. With no hierarchy in your planner to tell you what is more important, it's easy to get overwhelmed with tasks, easy to get confused over what you should do first, and easy to spend time on tasks that aren't as important while other more important tasks are passed over. Most all-in-one planner systems on the market are incomplete systems. They give you the space to enter in appointments and task lists only after true planning has taken place elsewhere, if at all. So in my experience, this means most people aren't doing the work of planning, like real planning. They're simply using their planner calendar spreads to record data, that they're already aware of, which is good for remembering, as I said, but not good for optimizing which work you'll actually do and the process you'll undertake so that the path to your finish line is streamlined and simplified. It's no wonder to me why women in my community come to me frustrated that they can't find a planner that works for them or they can't stick to a planning system or they try planning but don't see any improvement in their productivity because the planners they have been using aren't functional. So how to find a complete planner system. First, you need to acknowledge that planning, what planning truly is. It's not crafting, it's not scrapbooking, it's not tracking tasks and events after the fact. It's not filling in an entire spread of your calendar with stickers and washi tape. Planning is listing out the process of what steps you're going to take towards an objective and optimizing those steps into a streamlined process before you ever take any action. Understand that there are really three phases to planning. Phase one is where you identify and define the objective. Phase two is where you review and solidify the process. And phase three is where you allocate your workload by scheduling the steps into the appropriate times in your calendar to make it easy to understand what you need to do first and then what the next action is after that. That is what it means to have a functional planning system, a planner that gives you the space to plan start to finish. And this is what constitutes a complete planner. As Orson Marden says, a good system shortens the road to a goal, and that is my belief when it comes to having a complete planner system, a functional planning system, a planner that you can actually plan start to finish to all of those planning phases in one place. When you plan like this, it shortens the road to a goal. A lot of people want to know, like, what's the way to shortcut your productivity, right? Having a good plan, having a planner that gives you the ability um, to create that system for yourself is the shortcut. There's no shortcut for doing the work, but you can shortcut things by having a good thought out plan ahead of time.
So let's get some more clarity around planning, okay? Because I'm hoping at this point you have gotten some clarity about planning. So I want to see now, get a little bit of test in the waters here. Do you clearly see now what obstacles are holding you back from planner piece? We wrote down those three obstacles in the beginning. Do you guys have more, more clarity now? Please leave me a comment. <laughs> Do you clearly see now how most planners on the market are incomplete and therefore make it harder for you to reach your objectives? Do you guys see that now? Do you clearly see how functional planning system, how a functional planning system is a tool to improve your productivity and help you achieve the life and goals that you want? If so, I have the perfect solution for your planner piece struggle. The master planner. As I like to say, one year, one life, one master plan. The master planner is the system I've been using and developing through the latest scientific research into productivity and success. It's the most functional, versatile, and streamlined all-in-one system for planning. It's the only planner I have ever seen that takes into consideration the three phases of planning and gives you the space to do it all. Phase one, remember, is defining those objectives, and that's found within my brilliant ideas spreads, which are the brain dump, which help you clear your mind to process the plan and organize tasks by priority before you act. And the brainstorm section, where you define the problem and outline possible solutions to prepare your plan. Finally, I've got some notes in there for you to keep track of additional reference information and take notes to help you take all ideas into account for your plans. Now, I want to make one point very clear. Like I said in that last slide, every, <laughs> every spread, everything in my planner is backed by scientific research. So this phase, this defining objectives phase, brain dumping is an important part of your planning process to get everything out of your brain and onto paper so that you can then organize and prioritize because a prioritized task list is more infe- more effective than a jumble of information that you've just written on a page in a weekly spread, like I need to do this, 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 this. There's no prioritization. There's no organization. There's no nothing, right? Brainstorming, again, an important part of the process for specific objectives you're trying to reach. It gives you an ability to outline the problem that you're facing or the thing that you're trying to work on, the thing you're trying to create, the objective you're trying to, re- to you know, hit and give yourself an opportunity to brainstorm different solutions so that you can find the best, best path forward for you to make a plan. And then notes, right? Keeping track of additional reference information that you need. Not all the notes in the world, but you may need different notes, right? Information, things that you might need to keep in mind, right? Those sorts of things are very important. Taking notes is very important. So that's all found within the Brilliant Idea Spreads. That's phase one of planning. So I want to give you a look here at the brain dump. This is my brain dump spread with the organize and act. This is what's known as the Eisenhower Matrix. If you've ever read Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Franklin Covey, This is not something that I have made up, you guys. This is something that is very old tool, very well-researched, very effective, right? Listing things out and prioritizing them by importancy and urgency. Brainstorm. This is my brainstorm and plan and prep sheets. On the right side, you can, you know, kind of do a little bit of a mind mapping, right? This is a little bit more of a structured mind map where you can define your problem or goal or objective and then use the additional boxes to kind of create a map of your thoughts or list out different categories of information, however your brain works, right? Because this is the thing, this is why I get a little bit jittery about sharing exactly how I plan because people think that they need to do the exact same thing. Not all of our brains are wired the same way, you guys. Like you might do a mind map completely different than me and you put a hundred of us in the room and you're gonna get a hundred different mind maps. But if you have me sitting on stage, you know, showing you guys how to do everything, I guarantee you guys are gonna try to do what I'm doing and it's not gonna be effective for you. Do you see what I'm saying? Because we all have different ways of getting to our own objectives. So this is where you'll be able to kind of do this pre-planning. Think about that plan before it becomes a a a solidified, you know, sort of project. And then notes, pretty simple, self-explanatory, right? (laughs) Phase two is to solidify that process, right? Once you've gotten this the everything out of your brain, you've done the brainstorming, you've got like, you know, you're thinking, okay, I want to go this way with this project. You use the important project section in the master planner. This has the yearly project tracker, which is where you outline your plan to work on each objective throughout your year to balance your workload and expectations. This is one of the biggest things that I see as a problem for people when it comes to planning is that people try to do too much at one time, do too much too soon. There's this great quote that I'm going to botch right now by Tony Robbins because I didn't write it on the slide, but it says people overestimate what they can do 
in a month and underestimate what they can do in a year, something like that. People overestimate what they can do in a day, in a week, right? This is why a lot of people make a to-do list and then like only half of it gets done. And they're like, oh no, now this has to move on. You know, now I'm behind, right? We overestimate what we can do right now, but we underestimate what we can do in the long term. And that's what the yearly project tracker is all about, correcting that by giving you the opportunity to map out where you're going to be working on certain objectives. And then, of course, we've got project plans with notes. You solidify the process that you'll take to reach your objective through a step-by-step plan. So here's what the yearly tracker looks like. We've got short, mid, and long-term goals. So we've got boxes for every month for short-term goals. Mid-term goals are what I consider quarterly. And then long-term is like half a year or the whole year, like things that you just want to need to get done, you know, maybe throughout the year. And then this is what project plan with notes looks like identifying the project, description, due date, very important, resources that you're going to reference, the tasks, right? So the actual step-by-step process and then a place to note or add extra things. So useful. I use my ugh, I use my project plans all the time. Like I love turning things into a project plan. It just really helps organize information. Then phase three of this planning process is to allocate your workload. So in here, I've got calendar spreads, yearly trackers, which provide a big picture overview for planning and tracking key information throughout the year. Monthly calendars and trackers where you can schedule events and track tasks for completion while integrating non-project related tasks, remember the everyday and mundane things, to ensure that all areas of your life are moving smoothly. And the weekly plan where you solidify the process that you'll take to reach your objectives your objectives through a step-by-step plan day in, day out, week in, week out. Here's yearly calendar example, 2020, a yearly tracker, the yearly overview, okay, my monthly plan. And I always get a lot of questions about the this week. Everyone's like, is that supposed to say this week or this month? Yeah, it's supposed to say this week. And this is part of allocating tasks. In that this week section, you have for every week across in the month, you have the ability to write in three prioritized tasks, the things that are the most important for that week. This is how we allocate successfully so that we say, okay, it's not just about having a whole to-do list. It's about allocating, okay, this needs to be done this part of the week. And then I can work onto this phase at this part of the month, sorry, and I can see that I have time to do everything in my month. Monthly tasks and the new and improved monthly tracker. Monthly tasks is where you're going to put all the things you need to do for the month, right? Come from your project plans, come from your Monday in life tasks. It helps you to have one focused to-do list for the entire month. And then the monthly tracker is awesome. I love this new design. This is perfect for anyone who wants to track expenses like in my original design or still wants to track habits. You can track habits with this. I have been doing money manifestation with mine. I'm going to show you guys that in a future video, how I'm doing like this money manifestation through my tracker, but you can track a lot on that tracker. Very versatile. I'm so pleased with this. And then the weekly plan, right? So we have, this is the weekly plan that comes in the bound planners or in the A5 half letter digital, right? So it is that vertical week on two pages, top three to do's for every day, a space for you to write additional to do's or to create a schedule of tasks, and then that open box at the bottom so you can put like what you're doing in the evening, what you're having for dinner, whatever. It could just be more information, something. I, I actually use those bottom boxes to like organize additional information throughout the for, that apply to the whole week. So I might put like all dinners in one or habit things that I'm tracking in one and, and maybe like I'll break down a project that I'm working on in one so that I kind of like see that information for across the week, okay? So this is the weekly plan for A5 Half Letter. This is the weekly plan that you get in the letter size, the A4 or letter size. This is optimized. All of my weekly plans are optimized. That's the only difference across all of the planner sizes is that they are optimized for the space you're getting. So when you're using a full sheet of paper here per page, right? So these are two sheets of paper you're looking at. The left-hand side is about creating those priorities, right? Your top five projects for the week, the tasks that you need to do, assigning your top three for every day, writing down something that might be very important to remember about that week. And then the right side is what I call the dashboard, where you can create a schedule in that open uh, chart. You can create a schedule. If you're someone who wants to create a schedule, you can add additional information. You can take notes in there. You can map out a little plan for how every day is going to go for yourself. You can even track work hours. I know people do that, like people who work hourly for different things. They kind of go in there and create little boxes where they can track, like, okay, I worked for this amount of time for this company and I did this for this, you know, it's a good way for tracking things. You can also track your own physical symptoms of ailments or anything that you need to do like that you want to keep track of personally. You get a market list because we all go grocery shopping and shopping eventually, you know, throughout the week and a weekly meal plan as well. 
And then here is the weekly plan in the personal size. So again, like a truncated view of what is in the A5 half letter. And this is what I've been using. I really love this for people who just don't, who are just more task focused than schedule focused and want to use a smaller planner. I've been using it in my um, Kate Spade and I love it. Again, this week, a whole bunch of tasks, top three for every day, and then space for you to put in anything additional as well. Now, again, master planner is comprised of a total of 12 unique functional planning spreads that all work together to form one cohesive planning process. And I'm hoping you guys can see how all of the sections of this planner work together to, like I said, a good planning system will teach you how to plan so that you can become more productive. It's not going to do the work for you, and it's not a substitute for bad habits and bad routines and neglecting the planner. But when you do use it actively, you can see how a good functional system actually helps you to increase your productivity by giving you the spaces that you need to allocate and prioritize tasks. So the printable bundle the, which is what you can see here, the Charm Life Master Planner 2020 printable bundle comes with three sizes, personal, A5 half letter, and then letter, which is also A4, plus some awesome bonuses when you purchase this month only, okay? So let me tell you guys about the bonuses that are expiring at the end of this month. Bonus number one in this bundle is the Master Print Planner printable tabs, okay? So I'm giving you a, a, a set of Master Planner tabs, and I think you guys can see I've got these Hopefully you guys can see it. I can't really see. I've got these tabs in my planner that uh, mark off the months and the different sections of the planner, right? So this is a print-on-demand printable tab set. Yours free with this bundle for this month. Bonus number two, let me see if I can play this. Yep, is the mini calendar printable journaling cards. So you guys can see this is a set of my beautiful journaling cards for 2020. Look how lovely they are. I love them. Let's see if we can get it to stop on my birth month. Mark. Oh, no, it just went to the next one. Okay, well, <laughs> bonus number three is the Master Planner printable sticker set. So this is an exclusive printable sticker set just for Master Planner users that puts together some of my favorite sticker designs, my most used designs um, in one sheet. And again, bonus number three for you. But that is not all, okay? So these are three great bonuses that are part of the Master Planner bundle for this month only. But I got one more thing to show you guys today, okay? I've got a fast action bonus. If you guys here in the next 48 hours purchase the Master Planner Digital Bundle, you're also going to receive, like drum roll please for this one, the Master Planning Digital Masterclass, okay? So this is a masterclass that I've created to help people learn how to use their Master Planner and to maximize functional planning and maximize how they're using their planner, how you get the most out of it, how you learn the routines, what my exact routines are, etc. So this is a $97 class that I'm giving to you for free if you buy the bundle in the next 48 hours, okay? But you're going to need to purchase from the specific link in the description of this video. So there is a link for the fast action bonus, which is you can get the whole digital bundle plus the three bonuses plus access to the masterclass, which one of the reasons I'm doing this right now is because I'm going to be updating this class in the next few weeks um, just to give you guys some more additional examples. I've had this class up, I think, yeah, since like last year for like a year and a half, and I've gotten a lot of great feedback. And since I've changed parts of the inside, mostly just that tracker, um, and I've changed that tracker across all of my planners now, I want to update the class. So you're basically getting the whole like under construction right now for free. It's under construction, but you guys will be able to access the class as it is now, and then you'll get continued access to it after um, after I do the update as well. So you guys can get this class, go through it now, get through get the update when that is ready to go as well. It's all in the um, class page, right? So you have like access to a private class page where you can watch this, get additional downloads. I've got a lot of stuff on that page for you guys, just different things to help you maximize your planning. So that is what we've got right now for you guys, okay? So I'm gonna go back to me. And let me see my scenes here. Yeah, so I can go back to you. And I got a message too, I want to let you guys know while I was filming here, that I thought when we were in that screen that that camera was live, but it was really this camera here. So if you guys had seen me in that, while we were in the full screen with the, with the slides, if you saw me going, looking that way, looking here, instead of, I mean, you're not going to tell the difference. If you see me looking away, it's because I was in the wrong here. I was in this camera, I think, that camera, and I was like looking like that, like talking to you guys over there, thinking you were over there, but you weren't. I couldn't see. It was just so small on the, my little preview window. So 
let's see, can I double with you? It doesn't really matter, I don't think, but I'm gonna see if I can double this screen. Can I do a split screen with this? I don't know if I can, okay. Maybe I can. Can I? Can I? Can, mm, no, I don't think I can put both of these on actually. Okay, so we're, we don't need to have that slide up. Um, if you guys need information on that, feel free to let me know when I will. Um, and I'll let you guys know. Okay, so let's see what we got going on here. Let me take another sip of water. Please make sure you do as well. Keep hydrated. Hydration is important. Mm. <clears throat> okay, so does anyone have any questions about the presentation? I want to go through, and I know there's lots of comments that happened while I was not able to see them. So let's see what you guys think. And um, let's go ahead and if you have any questions, like I said, that were written down before, go ahead and type them in the comments so we can get this going. You know, I guess I can talk forever and it's 2.20 right now. So we've been on here for an hour and 20 minutes and maybe we can just wrap this up within two hours. Who knows? We could be magical like that today. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> I'm trying to see where we landed here. Hello, hello, and let me say hello again to anybody who may have jumped on while I was doing my uh, presentation part. Hello, welcome, thank you for being here with me. I hope you're enjoying this class today. Please give this video a thumbs up. I can see a lot more thumbs up, I'm very happy with that. If you did learn something, if you got a takeaway, if you had some inspiration, if you love the freebie that I made, the free gifts for you guys, thumbs up, you guys. A lot of work goes into this stuff. <clears throat> I love giving you guys presents. Um, See, my one of my... um. You guys could probably tell that my, what's it called? I'm looking at the wrong, looking at the wrong camera again. One of my, what's it called? Love languages is, is gifts. So I love giving people presents. So that's why I love to give you guys free gifts. Mm. And I know you guys love my designs. So, cause you, you have such great taste. <laughs> uh, oh, someone said their first planner was a Lisa Frank zipper planner. You know, it's funny. I used to like Lisa Frank, but I didn't get a lot. Like, I remember the trapper keepers that people had in school that were like Lisa Frank, but I never had one. I think maybe I had some stickers. Uh, Lorelai says that her first planner may have also been a fake, fake, a fake fur animal print uh, from 92. That would be about right. That would be about right. I would have been about six years old in 92. So that absolutely could be it. Hmm. Oh, today is Area 51 Invasion Day. Excellent. Welcome to the aliens or whoever's here to see us. I'm not sure what the invasion's about, but welcome, planet Earth. Um, someone said, Carla says she got a dollar store planner out of necessity. Uh, I guess that was her first planner. Lisa Frank was at where it's at. <laughs> first planner was a happy planner. So someone who must be gotten into planners more recently. Uh, someone said they spent so much babysitting money on Lisa Frank. That's so funny. You guys love that Lisa Frank. I just remember the unicorns. Tanya says that she and Christy Belcamino have gone through a million planners as authors, and this is the best one for all areas of pr productivity and peace that they found. I think they're referring to my planner because I do know that Tanya and Christy, who are authors, um, are both users of the master planner, which is awesome. A little bit of a testimonial here for you guys. Oh, here, Christy says, so true. And I checked out so many this past year and both came back to the master planner. Hello, hello, Robin is joining me. Hello, I see some like friends here and stuff. Um, let's see. Oh, Jenna says, we set men up to expect it from us. Ah, see, this goes back to the beginning, what I was saying at the beginning of the um, of the presentation, that this is the thing, like not only do these expect expectations fall on us, we, we now make, let other people expect it from us as well. So this is like the problem with taking on too many external expectations and not setting enough boundaries is not only are we doing it to ourselves, we're conditioning those around us to treat us the same way to throw more stuff on us like come on like how many of you out there who are, who are like married have kids like don't worry mom will take care of it right that's an expectation that someone is sending because you did not set a boundary around things you know what I mean that's exactly what I'm talking about someone said the download link is not working yet well let me see if I can I don't know if I can fix it while I'm live but we'll see I might not be able to if it's not working um Actually, oh, my phone fell. 
If it's not working, I will fix it right after I get off. Let me close out of here. What was not working? I'm going to the page. Oh, is it not linked? Let me just go. I think it should be though. I'll go into my account and just really, just really quickly see if it's linked in because I do see the page working on my end. <clears throat> it is possible that I totally didn't link the, the gifts though. In which case you do get an email though. You'll get an email too. Oh, and Jenna, oh, Jenna says, you're gonna make me cry, Alexis. Thank you so much for caring about us. That is so sweet. Um, yeah, this is the thing, you guys, like um, a lot of this work that I've been doing over the past few years, like really diving deep into productivity in just like totally different ways has really been around solving this issue for women. Because I mean, for me, like when I got into the planner community and I found my people and everyone was like, oh my God, planners are awesome. I thought everybody kind of knew this information, but I realized, you know what? This is information that's not taught in schools, and it's information that would be really helpful for it to be taught in schools. I'm sure that back in the day, maybe when there were some home economics classes, and I know that some colleges, you know, a long time ago used to focus on, you know, women and organizing home things and things like that. But I just don't think that that's prevalent anymore, right? Like, I just don't think it's prevalent anymore. I realize that I'm kind of an outlier when it comes to women my own age. Like, I see this with a lot of different things. Um, I, you know, there's a lot of skills that I feel like I have, like I can, you know, I can cook, I can sew, I know how to keep a house clean. Um, I have, and I'm really good at interior decorating. Like when people come to my house, like even when I was like first out of college, people would be like, this is your house? Like you, this is your apartment? Like it looks like adult, like it looks like there's furniture places. Like a lot of times when you go to like, <laughs> even like a grown person who's gone to college goes to work, you know, they don't have like a kitchen table. You, you don't know how many of my friends like didn't have kitchen tables and I'm like urging them, please buy a kitchen table. Um, because it's just like, these are not priorities that are put in our mind. These are not skills. People think that these things are hard. Like running a life, right? Being the CEO of your life, being the editor of your life, if you joined me for my last live class, these are just not skills that are shared. They're kind of assumed, right? And the problem, we all know the problem with assuming things, right? Is that it's, it does not go well, right, when you just make assumptions. So I really feel like from hearing from my community, community and seeing that women wanted so much and so desperately to kind of follow my lead and be productive and be successful, but they're not getting the right information. And then in the planner community, it's wonderful. We have so many diverse opinions. We have so many great people out there, so many people doing so good. But the prevailing message that we get from the planner community is that this is for stickers and writing down to do's. And that's what planning is. And I will have to respectfully say, if you go to the dictionary, we are using that word wrong. Oh, you know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, reminds me of, oh, indigo. Well, it's not indigo. It wasn't. It's like inconceivable, right? I don't think that means what you think that means, right? I don't think that word like planning, I don't think it means what you think it means. Like to some people, like, and I see this out there, right? Where people think that planning is one thing. And it's not, it's not, and it's okay. It's okay for it to be scrapbooking. It's okay for it to be hobby crafting, but it's not gonna make you more productive. It's not going to make you um, a more successful person. You're not gonna get more organized when you use your planner like that. And that's the message that I wanna make sure that I at least am a voice that's resounding this loud and clear. And I know I'm not the only one who is saying this, but you know, I wanna help. Like I really do wanna help. If you guys didn't know a little bit about me and my backstory, you guys know my name's Alexis. For those of you who do not know, the name Alexis means helper of mankind. So I have, since I ever learned that, when I learned that, like I think you had to like research her name when you were in grade school. When I learned that, I legit, like it flipped a switch, like Alexis, you have a purpose in life. You are now intended to help people. So I am naturally like this, like this is what I want. I help everybody in my life. My girlfriends are all the ones who come to me and ask me for advice. They're like, how do I get organized with this? Alexis, what should I do about this? I wanna do that. Like people ask me everything, etiquette things. Like I'm going to a wedding, what should I wear? I'm going to, um, I have a baby shower, should I be buying this? Like well, Alexis, what is the etiquette? Because I, like I said, I'm an outlier, I feel like in my generation where I have prioritized this sort of information. I was raised to kind of, seek out this information and was taught this information, but it's not the way everybody was taught. And this is why I think that our generation, the millennials, is the first generation where we don't have it as good as our parents did. 
right? We don't. Like, like I said, I'm an outlier, right? I definitely did. My grandparents put in the effort. My parents and family put in the effort. I am at a place in my life where a lot of people like my age would wish they could be, right? And that's just makes me an outlier, unfortunately. And I really want to help like raise the bar, as they say, a uh, rising tide lifts all boats. I would like to lift all of us up to this level, right? Because I think the only difference between me and you right now is that I know the information and you don't. And I'm hoping that hearing the words vibrating out of my mouth flips a switch with you and helps you to understand what your real problem is. Because so many of us go through life thinking our problem is one thing and it's really something else. And I want to be really crystal clear about that because I do care about you. And I know it's really funny to say this, but I even think that me caring for you, like do not even think like, oh, Alexis, you're so sweet and you're amazing. I think it's selfish for why I care about you. I care about you because I want this world to be better. <laughs> like I want this world to be better for me and my family and like my children and my grandchildren. Like I think it's selfish, you know? I wanna make the world a better place so that it can be a better place for me and the rest of society and the rest of future generations, right? Like I'm not just doing this out of the kindness of my own heart. I feel called to do this, but... I think that when you do better, I do better. That's the thing, right? We all see how this happens. This is one of the things that like is, you know, the double-edged sword of capitalism. Capitalism on one hand can make people very greedy and it becomes very money hungry, but then a capitalist society also helps people, right? Like when people have money, when people are um, being able to start businesses, you know, sell things and and their access to money and, and their achievement of their status and their goals isn't withheld from them. The whole world benefits from that. So like this is very much what I feel like my purpose is. And I felt very called over the last few years to do a really deep dive into this and really dig into a lot of science and a lot of neuroscience and a lot of brain stuff. You guys can go back into my videos last year. I'm talking about productivity alchemy. We're going to get to that and all of the sort of esoteric ancient knowledge that has kind of just been really just, I think it's common knowledge that was just been like wiped over Um, and you know, there's so much about this that is, uh, you know, neuroscience and like a lot of magical sort of manifestation-y sort of things that magic is just science undiscovered, you guys. Like there's very real reasons for a lot of the ways these things happen. And when it comes to your productivity, so much of this science is showing me like the way forward. And I'm trying to, my I see my role as someone who is to research it, to learn it all, digest it, and to give it to you guys, that's kind of gross. It's kind of like mama feeding baby bird. I want to process all that information and synthesize it and hand it to you so that you don't have to read like the 20 to 30 books that I've already read this year. And a lot of them are very heavy, boring psychology or, I mean, I don't think it's boring, but you guys might find Carl Jung boring. And um, and science and things like that, that are all being put together by me to, you know, not by me, like I'm not doing the research. I'm taking that information and synthesizing the research and putting together in a beautiful packaged bow that you can just take this and say, okay, Alexis did the research. We can trust this. Now I'll take this and I will I will run with this, right? And then you take that information and make your life better, please. So we make the world better. So as they say in the new agey community, we raise the vibration of the planet, right? So that's what I'm trying to do here. So... A lot of other people here are saying that, yep, it should be something that kids learn about. Productivity just isn't, which is really, really unfortunate. Oh, let's see. A lot of comments here about, you know, not trying to buy all the things in the planner community. I totally have lived through that, you guys. Um, Let's see. I'm going to try to pull... Okay, so someone asked a really good question. What about work per- planner and personal planner? Okay, so they said, I do not want my personal info in my work planner. And they think it looks unprofessional. So this is a question by MJ. Oh, can I share this? Can I- How does this work? Oh, I can. You Hopefully you guys can see that. How do I take it off now? Oh, over here. Okay, so maybe you guys can see it. Maybe you can't. I'm sorry. But this is the question. I can highlight things to answer. So the answer to this question is, this is one of the few situations where I say it's okay to have two planners. There are situations where you, like some people have jobs where they do the work at work and it stays at work. And that's one of the situations that I say is a good, excellent reason to have a planner for work and a planner for personal, okay? That's fine. Because if you leave your work at work and you don't bring it home with you, no big deal, right? Because you can have a planner for work and a planner for your personal life and those things are clearly separate. 
Also, people who work in certain industries and certain professions where for legal purposes, they should really keep it separate or for professional purposes, you want to keep it separate, do it. These are one of the, these are some of the few examples though, because I don't want to, you know, I don't want this to be like an easy out for people like, oh, I can use two planners because the truth of the matter is, is that you have one 24 hour day to manage, right? That's all you got. You've got one 24 hour day to manage over and over and over and over and over. And having two planners and separating information means that you're not going to be able to create one cohesive plan that's going to make everything easier for you. Now, like I said, if you have work that stays at work and your home is home, no problemo because they're clearly separate. But a lot of times, um, I think we get overwhelmed because we've got like a planner for, let's say, our personal life. We've got a planner for work. We've got a planner for our side hustle that we're doing. We've got a planner for church, right? And it's like all this information is all these different places. And even if you think you're remembering it all, it's very hard to come up with one cohesive plan when all of your information is in all different places, right? So we want to make sure, that's why I think it's very important to have one streamlined system for most situations, okay? So thank you very much for that excellent question, MJ. So let's see. Mm. I'm trying to get through questions. It looks like there's you guys are talking a lot, which I love to see that you guys are interacting and talking. Um, okay, so Christy says, Alexis, I would still like some more hands-on stuff about different ways to use the Brilliant Ideas section one day. That is coming in the Master Planning Masterclass update. I'm going to show you guys some examples for how to actually execute on that stuff. Give you some, and this is the thing. It's just like it's taken me a long time to even think of lots of ways because remember, like I said, I have my way of using the things, and it's even a struggle for me to like look outside my like look out and see like what other ways people could do things. So that's one of the things that I struggle with, and I totally know that, which is why I commit to updating these things. So that is coming in the update. I'm going to give you guys some like examples of different ways that you can use the brilliant ideas, a couple of different ways you can use the uh, project plan, and even different ways you can organize like your monthly information or use that new tracker or um, use your week so that you can understand how to manage information in a few different scenarios, right? <laughs> this is great. Tanya says, I use the master planner for all of my life and I have four kids. Can I change this format here? Let me see. Oh yeah, let's take a background and make the background white. Let me make it back on white. Can I do that? Does that make it better? Oh, you guys, I fixed it. Now you guys can see these things better. Let's put this right here. Thank you, Tanya. I'm so glad for this excellent recommendation of the Master Planner. You guys, I'm being serious here. The Master Planner really is. I've been working on this since 2015, um, slaving away, really, trying to make this the most optimized system. And this is the one thing I want to say about the Master Planner that you guys might not really get at this point is I know that it's very important to find a system that works for you. The purpose of the master planner, right, is to give you a system in which no matter how you want to use it and how you need to use it, you can use it. Because the problem with a lot of the planners on the market, as I've already said, is that they're incomplete. They're just calendars. They're not places that really do true planning, and that's fine. But if you're someone who is using a planner in order to progress their life and goals and not just as a reminder system, then you need a complete system. It can be used in many different ways. And I know that I've so far only really been able to show you guys the way that I use it. Um, but like I said, there is going to be updates that Master Planning Masterclass where I go in depth a little bit more into some different things because I've gotten some wonderful inspiration from the community, which is really what I needed to see how you guys are going to use it, right? That's the thing that I think is so great about the system. I think a wonderful system gives you the framework and you can personalize it the way you need. And that's what I think the master planner does better than any other planner on the market, point blank. Okay? That's my opinion. <laughs> so let's see. Love the mini journaling cards. Already printed them. I think they're so cute. Do you guys love them? I put like icons on them this year, finally. I don't know why it took me so long to do that to this design. I just, I've just been feeling like in such a decorate things mode, I guess. Uh, let's see. Oh, I think I have a question here about people who, I th okay, I'm going to assume here because I can't say. If you already bought the planner, right, earlier on, during a different special, then you're not, it's not included right now, right? So this is a 48 hour special right now, but um, I can't, if you guys are someone who's bought it, send me an email and I can send you a link to get it like discounted, okay? 
but only if you've bought the 2020 Master Planner bundle, okay? So like no other things count, just this bundle and I'll give you a discount on it. But like in August, there was a discount on the planner itself. Um, so this is a special offer for the next 48 hours only, okay? So if you want the master class and you've already bought the bundle, send me an email and I will take care of you. But there were different offers that were made at different times to sweeten the deal in different ways. Oh, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to add this to the broadcast because I think this is really important. Okay, so... This com Cassium T said, I really appreciate that you talk about this stuff. Honestly, a lot of the stuff you talk about at the beginning of the video are things I talk about often with my therapist. So this is the thing, right? I think, and I'm hoping that you're talking about the worth, right? The worth and feeling like you're not doing enough even though you are. If this is you, right? And I felt this way too in the past as well. You have to realize, you have to get honest with yourself that you are likely already a very productive person, okay? Like, I understand that there are women out there who think they are not doing enough. They're, they come to me and they're like, Alexis, I need to be able, like, I'm not, I'm failing at life. I'm not doing well. I, I, I suck at productivity. And then they tell me all the things they do in a day. And I sit back and go, I got whiplash for how fast you have to be moving through your life and how busy you're keeping yourself. And you are achieving so many things, like you are achieving so many things. Why don't you realize that? And it's because we compare ourselves to others. We get this message from the world that like women are supposed to do everything and take care of everything and be all things to all people. And it's just a, it's just an illusion. It's just other people's opinions. It's like stuff we really need to reprogram ourselves to cut ourselves off from those beliefs that are really causing us to have a lot of issues in our own lives. And like I said, the biggest issue for me is women's, is honestly women's health, okay? Okay. Um, in college, I was in a sorority, okay, and um, the, our, what's it called, our, oh, geez Louise, can't think of what it's called, our philanthropy, right, the, uh, the, the philanthropy that we supported, right, um, was for women's health, okay, like women's heart health, and this is something that I think, and I definitely want to talk to you guys about this because I think this is really important, and this is one of my very motivating factors for why I talk to you guys about this stuff, is that there is a common misconception that men are the sufferers of heart attacks, that men that heart attacks kill more men. And the reason we think this is because when we look on TV and we see in ads and we go to, you know, doctor stuff, right? They're always talking about men, signs of heart attack for men, like men, like take an aspirin if you feel tightness in your chest, the pain down an arm. You know what I'm saying? Like a men of a certain age, go talk to your cardiologist, go get the things, right? Because we have to prevent you from having a heart attack. The PR on heart attacks is that they happen to men, that heart disease is a male thing, but it's not true. Women suffer and die from heart attacks at the same rate or even greater in some instances, depending on their demographics, than men do. And yet our symptoms, women's symptoms for heart attacks are never talked about as much as men's are. Did you know that women, in many cases, right, and I'm not a doctor, but this is from like the research I've done, things I've seen, you know, working with a philanthropy in college that was very tied to women's heart health, is that, and that's Red Dress for Women, if you guys like know that, the Red Dress, the whole campaign, is all about the fact that women suffer from heart attacks and there has to be an entire campaign to talk about it because we only ever talk about male heart attacks. But stress affects women too, just like men. It's Women are really doing more, I think, you know, in some ways than men are. You know what I mean? Like, that's my opinion. So I, um, the point I want to make is that a lot of times women have completely different symptoms than men do in their heart attacks. Like, we don't have like the the pumping, heart being grabbed, arm down one side. A lot of times women have a more generalized tingling sensation in our body. And it's because our like our physiognomy, the way we are inside is different than men's are. So our symptoms of a heart attack are different. And guess what ends up happening? Because women are always putting other people first, right? We see our, you know, we see our husband or our boyfriend or like some man in our life grab his chest, our dad, and we're like, oh my God, are you having a heart attack? A woman sitting there and going, oh God. I just feel a little funny, that's all. I'm getting lightheaded, I just need to sit down, right? These are the beginning stages of uh, signs of a heart attack. Could be, right? Could be, right? Doesn't have to be. And what do we do? We sit there and go, don't worry about it. I'll be fine. Just give me a glass of water. I'll be fine. Just let me sit down for a little bit. I'll be fine. Mom, do you want to go to the hospital? No, 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 no. I'm fine. I'm fine. Don't worry about me. I'm fine, right? Because this is what we've been conditioned to think, right? And then the unfortunate thing is about women and heart attacks too, is that it's not just 
the general population that doesn't know how to really tell if a woman's having a heart attack, but even health professionals. Because when many women go to a, uh, like a man versus a woman going to the emergency room, grabbing their chest, a man, they will rip you open, they will put you on a machine, they will check to see if you're having a heart attack. A lot of times women, and specifically women of color, go to the, heart, go to the hospital because they're experiencing signs and symptoms of a heart attack for them, and they are ignored. Okay, and I'm, I'm saying this very generally. I'm not attacking hospitals or the healthcare system at all. But because these symptoms aren't as prevalent, because we don't push this information on what women, what's experiences for women, right? Because the stereotype is that men die from heart attacks, not women, even though it's not true. Uh, they, they do at the same rate. Um, you know, a woman will go to the hospital and she will complain of a heart pain or chest pain or whatever, or I just feel different. I'm not sure what's going on. And they will not consider it an emergency at the same rate. Now, if you go to a good hospital and stuff like that, like I'm sure they'll take care of you again. Like I'm not saying this is not a blanket statement, but science has shown time and time again, research has shown time and time again, that more women and more women of color end up going to the hospital and dying of heart disease because people are not acknowledging their symptoms. And this is a problem. This is a societal problem about the views of women and expectations. And we are not taking care of ourselves. And the rest of the world sure as hell is not going to take care of us for us because the expectation is women will take care of themselves and they'll take care of their spouse and their aging parents and their community and their church and their kids' school. And they'll do all of these things and they'll do so with a happy face and their house will be perfectly and beautifully organized all the time. And they'll have dinner on the table every day at 6 p.m. And they're going to have the most well-behaved, well-dressed, clean children in the entire world. And they have their lives together and they know what they want to do. And all they want to do is be housewives and stay at home. Like they don't even want to be working. Like, you know, a woman's place is in the home and all that other mumbo jumbo. Even though science says, we the breadwinners, we the breadwinners, we the breadwinners, we have better jobs now, we go to college more than men do, like we're just more successful now, like we run the world, who run the world, girls, right? Like that's the way it is. We have to start acknowledging these new facts, right? This is new facts. We got the science, they got the data, they know it's true. Why are we not acting on it? Okay, you're important. And this is, this is why I have... I'm going to undo this one, okay? So this is, thank you so much for that comment. You are right. These are very prevalent issues that I think a lot of us are under uh, psychologically. So I'm saying it's mental stress as well. You said, you know, being with the therapist, very prevalent. You're not alone. Do not feel like you're the only one doing this. You're not. <laughs> All your sisters here on this, on this live stream have probably felt the same way at one point or another. Do, 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 do. Okay, let's see. What else? Oh, here, this is a good one. Let's add this one to broadcast. I like this. Uh, LG says that she uses the plan and prep pages for project planning, but also for savings, debt repayment, moving. Yeah, I mean, I'm telling you, I track a lot of different things in my project. I consider a lot of things projects, right? I consider projects any sort of multi-step activities, right, that I want to keep track of. So good point, LG. Let's see. What else we got going on here? Okay, here's another good question by LG. Can you clarify more on the part using it for planning and not for reminders? Okay, so there's two different ways you can use a planner, right? You got a planner, it's got calendar spreads in it, right? It's got places for you to put things, dates and things like that. So one way of using this could be the reminder thing, which is like I put in that I have a dentist appointment at 2 p.m. on Tuesday, right? My kids um, are off from school this day. Um, this is my husband's work schedule, right? We're just inputting information for reference, things that we need to remember, things that we know that we need to act on um, and, uh, you know, even task to do is I need to get the car fixed. I need to go, you know, renew a registration for this. I have a doc. I need to, you know, make a doctor's appointment for this. Um, I need to take the dogs to the groomers. You know, I need to to do this, that, or the other. I have this is my house cleaning schedule that I do. I clean this on Monday, Tuesday. Even that's a little bit of planning, actually. But there's an idea of your planner can be used to just input information for you to remember so you can reference it, right? Because you shouldn't be holding information in your head. This is the point of the brainstorm, is that you don't hold your information in your brain. Your brain is not a storage system. It's not a hard drive. It is RAM. It's a processor. It's supposed to be processing ideas and information. So, and if I'm talking too fast for anybody, feel free to hit that button that says like slow down and you can actually change the speed at which I'm talking. But I am going to start talking fast probably so that we can go through some questions and get some information. So hopefully that's not too troublesome to too many of you. But essentially, um, there's using it for recording information and there's using it for planning. A lot of people come to me and say, Alexis, I don't know how to make a plan. 
And I'm, I'm like, okay, so you've got an objective that you want to hit. Yeah, yeah, I want to do X, right? And it's like, okay, so how are you going to get there? And they're like, I don't know it on how to get there. And I'm like, okay, so you're going to do research, right? You're going to go research, talk to experts. You're going to Google it. You're going to figure out what the steps are. You're going to list them all out. You're going to look at them. You're going to think what makes sense to me, right? And this is where like the brainstorm and the brain dump pages will come into play, right? You're going to take info. You're going to have to, you know, if you don't know how to do something, this is why we plan it out, right? Is because we want to know, we need to be able to arrange the the plan in such a way that it, it flows simply. For example... Um, when you're building a house, right? First thing you usually need to do is dig a foundation, right? You dig a foundation out, then you pour the foundation, and then on the foundation, then you can start building, putting up walls, whatever the process is, right? Um, And I understand that in life, very few things are as straightforward as building a house or um, another good thing, a thing I, I like to use as an example is recipes, right? When you're cooking a recipe, usually, especially baking, Baking is the hardest. Um, You have to follow a very specific set of tasks in a specific order usually in order to get the result, right? Um, If you miss things or you you skip from one part to the other, things aren't going to work out, right? Because a recipe has to be built step by step and a house has to be built step by step. But outside of that example, most things in life have a little bit of flexibility. For example, I want to start a blog. I want to start a business. Um, I'm trying to lose weight, right? There's lots of different ways that you might be able to get to that goal. Um, So step number one is defining the objective. Step number two is coming through and outlining what makes sense for you. Like I said, productivity is a strategy. It is doing the actions you feel called to take, the things that make sense to you in your brain. Visualizing part one, part two, part three, part four. Like this is what I'm going to do. This step, this step, this step, this step. And there are going to be steps where it's like, it doesn't matter if you do this part of the project before this part, right? There's always things like that in a lot of different projects, right? You can choose, you know, I'm going to work on this right now. Um, and it, it's not going to have any bearing in the the flow. But when you look at a lot of people, what they end up doing when they're not really planning, right, is that they just think, okay, I'm going to do this first. Okay, and then what I have to do from here? And then they just kind of like wing it each time. But when you're able to like see through the entire project start to finish, right? I like to say start with the end in mind and then work backwards because that's what they call, um, I'm not going to think of the word right now, right? Working backwards from the from the goal, right? Um, and kind of filling in the blanks, right? Well, this is what I want it to be last. So what's the next step going to be backwards, backwards, backwards? Or starting from where you are and kind of seeing like how you can merge those two through tasks so that they meet, right? Like, okay, I'm going to start with this. I want to end with this. Uh, You know, this is going to require these things. You literally need to brain dump all the steps, research all the steps that are possible, and then what makes sense to you. You know, when it comes to like for something like starting a business, right? Or um, yeah, for concerns to starting a business, you need a product to sell before you start marketing the business, right? So you wouldn't like just start making marketing things like, oh, because you don't know what you're making marketing for, right? Makes sense, right? So that's the idea with planning is getting all of this information out so that you can see it all. And, you know, this is like one of the things that I like to do is, and I've showed you guys this before, is I'll, you know, if I'm planning out a difficult project uh, that has lots of different steps, I will use sticky notes and I will put each step and I will kind of like rearrange and then I'll go, okay, um, once you have all the things, then the next thing I normally do is that 80-20 rule, the Pareto principle and go, okay, what can I take out (laughs) right now and say, well, let's focus on these things first and then I can add in these things like icing on a cake. Like what are the, what's the bare minimum I need to do? And then what can I add in if I have time, right? And this is also something that's talked about in a book called Scrum. If you've never heard that book, um, definitely remember, uh, recommend it. Who wrote it? J.J. Sutherland, something like that. Um, so this is the idea of like project management so that you're moving things forward to completion. You start with what's the minimum framework that you need to do to complete a goal, and then you can add things in as you go. So that's the difference. I hope that makes sense. I don't want, I could talk about this for three years. Um, so I hope that gives you like a, a sense of those two concepts. Let's see, let's see. Let's see. Oh, another question. Do you get the class if you bought the bound planner? No, this is just for people who have the digital. Get the digital. Oh, here's a good question. Very common question. I really want to purchase the bundle, but I'm not sure the right type of paper to use. Um, Yes, so I would recommend... 
anywhere from, I think it's 24 pound to 32 pound paper. It depends on how much ink you use when you write, okay? So like 32 pound paper is really great paper, really great paper. Most planners on the market don't use that. That's what I used to print on, but it makes the planner very thick. Now what I've been using is like 24 or 26. I don't have my, what does this one say? Hold on, 24. I'm using 24 pound 96 bright, which is a nice bright white, but you choose what brightness you like. I just like bright white. Um, and that is what I print on. So usually planner, uh, just plain copy paper, that thin stuff that's just like for junk is, I want to say 20. So 24 is pretty good. Like I still think that's pretty good. 28 is really is really like a nice happy medium. And then 32 is like I use markers to write. And so you probably need thicker paper. You know what I mean? So that is what I would recommend, Crystal. And see, good. You guys are coming in and jumping in with your responses. Excellent. Reverse engineering is the word I was trying to look for, LG. Thank you. Reverse engineering my goals. Okay, so I am now here. So she's going to, I'm going to put this on screen so you guys can see what LG uses. Dom Tar First Choice 98 White 24 Pound Paper. What is mine? Because that is like one of my, the one I'm using is, what? hold on, it's over here. I can go get it. What is that? Let's see which one this is. This one is Office Depot laser print paper. <laughs> um, 24 pound, 96 bright. Yeah, you can get this. You don't have to buy the Office Depot one. You just look for this weight is really what you wanna look for. The weight is, is 24 pound. I think that's great. Yeah, anything less is too thin, absolutely. Okay. Okay, so let's see. Anyone else have any questions? We still have plenty of you here on. Oh, I've got some like reoccurring fours. I'm so excited, guys. Thumbs up this video. Thank you guys so much for coming. I'm so happy you guys were able to sit and talk with me today. We're getting up to three o'clock. So are we gonna are we gonna say adieu for now? Are we gonna say, are we gonna be done? Are we good? I mean, I'll be here for as long as you guys need. I'm committed to you today. <laughs> And of course, if you have any questions, if you're watching this in the future, in the replay, please go ahead, leave a comment down below, and I will absolutely do my best to address every comment. You can also email me if you are interested. My email is alexis at strangecharm.com. Let me go ahead and see if I can pop that up on the screen, actually. Hmm. No, not that. Is that what it is? No. Sorry, I'm trying to add my, oh, oh here we go, window in this window. I got lots of windows here I can add. Oops, Alexis. I'm just going to add it to the. Just making sure I spelled this right. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Look, you guys, it's my email. It's my email. If you want to email me any questions, you are absolutely are welcome to. Oh, it looks like we've got some people here too that are talking about my planning class. Okay, so let, do you want to talk about the planning class real quick in case you don't know? Um, as you, and um, let me tell you guys about the rest of the live class schedule too. Um, I am holding some more free live classes, one every month. Plus in December, we are doing a ticketed, oh, three, events of it three ticketed it's it's one you buy one ticket and you get all three events um planning new year's goal goal setting and planning classes okay so let me go through my, my planner here my handy dandy planner okay let's see let's go to october okay friday because these live ones these free lives are gonna be on fridays it's just an easier day for me to do this i hope you guys don't mind that friday October 18th at 1 p.m. Eastern time, we are doing a live money manifestation class. I'm so excited about this. Um, I got this idea because I was thinking about like holidays are coming up and I was like, holidays are coming up. You should really manifest more money from your business. So why don't I teach everyone how to manifest too so that they can get all of their 
holiday money in order, right? Because it's a very expensive time for me usually as Q4 because I'm usually having parties, dinners, presents, all that jazz, trips, going to visit people, all that stuff. Very expensive time of year. So in October, let's learn how to manifest money together so that we can get that under our belt, check that one off our list. And it's like a life skill. <laughs> it's a good life skill to have. <laughs> um, let's see. So that is October's free class. November's free class is Friday, November 22nd at 1 p.m. And that's going to be more of like a business class for creating passive income streams. So if you're anyone who is a business owner, even my author girls, Tanya and Christy on the call today, if you're someone who wants to be an influencer, wants to be a blogger, wants to add, or YouTube wants to add passive income streams to their life, even if you don't run your own business, you're just like, you know, I wanna add some passive income, how do I do that? I'll be talking about passive income streams and how to grow that sort of an income on that class on the 22nd. In December, the free live class is on Friday the 13th. Oh, another Friday the 13th. That's awesome. I'm so excited all these Friday the 13th. So Friday the 13th, there is a live planner set up at 1 p.m. So we are going to set up my planner for 2020 together live. So that's going to be a nice long one. I'm going to try to have some things prepped, but you guys will get an overview of my desk. We'll put things together. I'll explain what, what I'm doing and why. And you guys can literally set up your planner with me. Hopefully you have bought the planner, master planner bundle, taking full advantage of all these bonuses I have for you guys and the free class and secured that bundle for yourself. And then we can all set our planners up together. But no matter what you're using, you are absolutely more than welcome to join me and get some inspiration and ask me your questions about planner setups and even setting up a functional planner if the master planner is not right for you. So absolutely, I'm excited about that one. And then we have those three classes for the New Year's goal setting. That is a ticketed event um, on Wednesday, December 18th at 1 p.m. Saturday, December 21st at, wait, what did I say for? 8, 1 p.m. on the 18th, 8 p.m. on Saturday the 21st, and then 1 p.m. on Saturday the 28th. So I hope those were enough like classes for you guys. I'm just trying to fill this into my schedule as well. Um, and we're going to be goal setting for the new year. So I would absolutely love to have you join me for the new year's goal setting class as well. Um, that's going to be great. I have, I have a lot of, you know, cool, fun printables and things like that, worksheets that are going to go along with that. And if, you were, if you've were, if you joined me in the previous years, we're going to be doing kind of similar to last year. I just, I always want to make things better. So, you know, I'm going to, of course, update it for this year and hopefully add some more cool stuff to it. Um, but I would love to have you guys join me for that. Hmm. <laughs> okay. So I think this is probably all the questions we're going to get for today. I'm very excited. We had a great call. This was two hours. Pretty good. I'm impressed. Thank you guys for joining me. Let me go ahead and give you guys all the things that you guys can do after this. Of course, make sure you get your free gift down. It's the first link in the description box. Free gift. If you want the fast action bonus and you want to sign up for the bundle, I highly recommend doing that. Get all of those free goodies because it's a really tremendous value and it's going away in 48 hours. So definitely get that. Um, and follow me on Instagram right here at Miss Trenchcoat. You can see more of my classes and things that are available for sale at my shop, thecharmedshop.com. Subscribe to me here. There's a, no, it's not a button. It's just, there's the word subscribe is right here. It's like right here. I love this. This is so cute. Isn't this so cute? Okay, so thank you guys so much for joining me. Again, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Feel free to leave me comments, send me an email if you have any questions. I'm glad to help you. Uh, if you're not yet subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button for more awesome videos by me. And until next time, bye-bye.